Are you looking for the perfect page builder for your website for 2019? Well, stick around to the end because I have some great advice for you. Hey guys, I'm John from IncomeMesh.com. My goal in line is to help you find the perfect tool for your next project. And this video is a recap video of an experiment I just completed where I tested five different page builders, uh, Divi, Thrive Architect, Breezy, Gutenberg, and Elementor. The links to each one of those videos will be in the description below, as well as check out the entire playlist to watch me build each homepage step by step. And at the end of it, I ran five speed tests of each one to see which one performed better, as well as kind of gave my thoughts and my opinions about each page builder as I was going through the process. But in this video, what I wanted to do is give you kind of a brief um, five takeaways that I learned from testing these five different page builders. So let's go ahead and dive into those right now. So the first takeaway is that even though there is a slightly different building experience with each one of the page builders, the thought process is always the same. When you're building responsive websites using WordPress, you're thinking in terms of you know rows, columns, uh, widgets, elements, and settings. When you're going through building, you've got different uh, uh, sections of your content. You're always going to be building with a building block mentality where I want to drag this piece over here, that piece over there, connect them, merge them, and change the settings. So because of this, don't really get too tripped up about the experience of, oh, does Divi work right or wrong? Or is Elementor good or bad? Ultimately, they're all following the same general practice of building a website. They're just adding their own little details, which I'll talk about in the next uh, couple items uh, that make it better for you or not for you, depending on your own personality and build preferences. So number two is control versus ease of use. So let's take Thrive Architect and Elementor as kind of the, the differences there. So with Thrive Architect, they give you fewer elements. You know, they give you content boxes and headings and uh, little widgets here and there. But each widget that they give you is extremely powerful and flexible. You can make content boxes do anything you want to, essentially, and build from scratch almost anything with the widgets they give you. <clears throat> The challenge with that is it can be very difficult and you have to do a lot of double checking, a lot of mobile responsiveness checking to make sure that what you're building looks good on every screen size. Now compare that with Elementor where Elementor will give you tons of blocks, tons of different widgets you can pull in and they're all very pre-configured and set up the way that they're set up. Uh, you might have a little bit of uh, orientation where you can change things from left aligned to centered, but within the element that you're pulling in through Elementor, the settings are pretty much how they are. So you've got this kind of, uh, what personality are you? Are you the one who wants to build everything from scratch and have ultimate control? Thrive is going to be probably the way to go. Or do you want to have a bit more of a workflow where what you, the elements you have, they work well, they, they do what you need to do. You don't need to be exactly pixel perfect. Then Elementor could give you huge efficiency gains over Thrive. The next takeaway is around open versus closed systems. And again, we'll, we'll, we're, not, we're not picking on Thrive, but you know, they're, they're a really good example of some of these things. Thrive is a very closed system. You can't just add your own widgets or elements into Thrive Architect. What they give you, they give you, and the functionality they change and adapt, you'll get or you won't get. <clears throat> Take that to Gutenberg, on the other hand which is purely open. Anybody can create their own blocks, create plugins that go out into the world, and you can add functionality really on a daily basis depending on what your needs are. Now, does that mean that Gutenberg's always better? Not necessarily. Uh, Thrive, what they build, you know, it should be as glitch-free as possible because they're closing and they're, they're keeping that experience as much on their own as they can. But if you find that there's certain functionality that you need that maybe Thrive won't offer you, you might be able to find that with an Elementor or a Gutenberg where there's much more openness to additional development support. The next takeaway is, is your page builder working with Gutenberg or working against Gutenberg? And here we'll look at Elementor and Divi as two different examples of this. <clears throat> On the Divi side, to get the newest Divi experience, you actually have to roll back from Gutenberg into the classic editor using uh, their advanced settings within the Divi area. So in my opinion, <clears throat> they're kind of not really embracing uh, Gutenberg and trying to go all in with it. They are trying to keep you in the past and use the old experience so you can get the new Divi building experience. Just doesn't seem like they're they're not living in the past, but they're kind of putting you in that position of choosing Gutenberg or Divi the best Divi experience. Now compare that with Elementor and they, however, in my opinion, are really embracing Gutenberg because they've released a free plugin called Elementor Blocks for Gutenberg. <clears throat> and what you can do with that is anything you build in Elementor and save as a template, you can now drag into your Gutenberg built page or post with a few clicks of a button 
so that you don't have to choose Elementor or Gutenberg. You can actually have Elementor and Gutenberg work really well together. So from that perspective, again, right, wrong, that's up to you to decide. But uh, there are some page builders that are fully embracing Gutenberg, and there are some that seem to be kind of holding you back from that perspective as well. The last thing I'd ask you to do on my fifth takeaway is think about the big picture of your website and your vision as you go forward. For example, do you intend on hosting courses on your own website like I'm starting to do on IncomeMesh.com or do you want to use Teachable and or not even offer courses at all? If you're looking at adding a lot of rich additional functionality into your website, strongly consider mastering Gutenberg and really understanding it because every developer in the near future is going to have to support Gutenberg since it's the new experience in WordPress. On the other hand, they're not necessarily going to have to support a Divi or an Elementor or a Breezy because their market share is so much lower, it's less of a impact for them to support those page builders versus the one that's already built into every WordPress website. <clears throat> so for example, LearnDash is a great example where LearnDash has created individual blocks for almost every functionality and feature of LearnDash. You can add your ID profile with a single block. You can add your course progress with a single block. All that is much more difficult to do, not much more difficult, but it's, you know, short codes you have to remember and find and set up if you want to use that within an Elementor page or within a Divi uh, <clears throat> module, for example. So think about what it is you want to do. You know, Thrive is a great example where <clears throat> their goal is to give you all the tools you need. They give you Apprentice to launch your own courses. They give you Thrive leads to collect your own leads. So if you are okay with what they provide, that may be the one-stop shop that you need that's all nicely, tightly integrated together. But as soon as your needs change outside of what they're what they offer, you might be in a position of figuring out your next solution there. So at the end of the day, you may be wondering, John, what are you using on Income Mesh? And my primary builder is going to be Gutenberg. I'm going to also have Elementor included in that stack to allow myself to edit my theme and bring in Elementor blocks into my Gutenberg built pages. But I think it's important to embrace the new WordPress, the new editing experience, and try to embrace Gutenberg wherever possible. So that's going to be my direction going forward. If you'd like to learn more about Gutenberg from me, go ahead and head over to IncomeMesh.com. I am in the development process of putting together my first Gutenberg course, and I'm offering it for uh, free for new subscribers for a limited time. So go to IncomeMesh.com. You'll see the banner right there to get access to the course. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.